Hi everyone, my name is Steve Zahorian. I'm a faculty member in electrical and computer engineering and I'm going to take a minute or two and tell you about some of my research. Now, I work in one of the areas that you may be surprised electrical engineers work in and that has to do with speech communication and in particular it has to do with helping computers to understand speech. Now, probably almost everyone knows that, for example, Microsoft has programs and companies like Dragon for automatic speech recognition. But most of those work reasonably well, but there's still room for improvements. And so people like me and other electrical engineers and computer science people are working and trying to make these things better. And what I've been focusing on in particular is, is working on a program to help either the hearing impaired or people with speech defects to be able to speak better. And the, the technique we use is to try in real time to identify phonetic sounds that are spoken and give feedback on a computer screen uh, so that someone would be able to tell if they're speaking correctly or incorrectly in a particular way. So I'm going to do a short demo of uh, what we call our VATA program. VATA, V-A-T-A, -A, stands for Vowel Articulation Training Aid. So, I mean, this is just one example of many of the things my students and I are working on, but this is the thing that I can show you on a computer screen. So I will use the microphone here and uh, I'll put this on. And I could use a handheld mic, but it works slightly better anyway with a uh, uh, head mounted microphone. So uh, I had brought this up before and minimized it, so I will just go back to it. I'm going to make it uh, full screen just so we can see it better, hopefully, on the computer. Okay, now what I'm, I'm going to go through a series of displays here and we can edit these out to get rid of uh, what's extraneous. To begin with, we just sample whatever I'm saying uh, with the audio card on the computer. And so all you see here are waveforms that are more or less meaningless, but these are so-called samples of the acoustic waveform and this is being sampled at roughly 20,000 times per second. And it's just as I speak louder, ah, or softer, e, it gets bigger or smaller. But it's basically very hard to, uh, to get useful information for speech training. So we go through a series of steps. Oh, the computer believes I'm talking too loud. And, and the first couple of steps are just some basic filtering and signal processing uh, so that the following steps will work better. I think this one is after it's a filtered time waveform. And this is with some additional filtering. Part of what we do is some filtering to get rid of or minimize the uh, like breath noises from a microphone. The next step in our processing is we uh, uh, attempt to do what the ear does. And uh, we do a so-called frequency domain analysis. That's kind of what your ear does. So what we do is we use this algorithm called the Fast Fourier Transform and plus some nonlinear operations and estimate the frequency components in the real-time speech waveform. Now, this particular program, this version of it, is focused around the vowel sounds. When I just talk generally, even the spectrum changes all over. That's what carries the speech information. But if I say a vowel sound like ah, e, uh, the patterns are relatively stationary, but still difficult really to interpret, and also too difficult for the computer. 
So the next thing we do is some additional processing, and we compute something we call features, which is just a small set of numbers extracted from that spectrum. And again, if I focus, let's say, on the vowel sounds, ah, e, u, there's a relatively steady pattern for each steady vowel. But still, this is all very difficult to actually interpret. So what we really do is then finally use a so-called neural network, which mimics what the human brain does to actually attempt to recognize these vowel sounds and then uh, put a display on the computer, which hopefully the hearing impaired child or the speech impaired child will be able to use to modify how they speak. So the first one, and we have several of these displays then. Everything I've shown you so far is just for diagnostics really. But here is our first sort of real display. And in this one, I'm going to say these different vowel sounds and hopefully make the, <coughs> uh, the bar move from the left to the right of the screen. So I'll go through that. Ah, e, ooh, ah, er, i, eh, ah, uh, uh. Those are the 11 so called monothon vowel sounds of English. Now, another display which we thought in some cases would be a whole lot easier uh, is to have a kind of a two-dimensional representation and again our neural network takes all the speech information and projects it, projects it to a two-dimensional space where we attempt to move this basketball to a different area of the screen uh, for each different vowel sound the sound is produced correctly, as judged by the computer, the basketball moves to the appropriate ellipse and changes color and so forth. So let me demo this one. E, I, e, a, a, er, u, u, Ah. Now, as you can probably see, this works reasonably well, but still room for improvement. Now, I, I might note this is speaker independent. This has been trained on the voices of several hundred speakers, and so it's kind of trying to extract the essential average characteristics that are speaker independent. We do have different settings for males, females, and children, though. But then, beyond those basic uh, those displays, we've also, students really, have created different kinds of games that are controlled, again, in this case, by vowel sounds. And I'll just show one of those, the, the Pac-Man. In this case, there's a side menu where four different vowel sounds can be selected uh, to move the little ghost around here in each of four different directions and then one can play the game. Uh, so if I do a little bit of this uh, uh, er, uh, uh, and so forth. So, and then we have some even simpler games. Okay, but I'm just kind of summarizing. I'm an electrical engineer. I'm working on a problem which, you know, I hope can help people. Uh, there's been a lot of interesting computer programming and signal processing, as we call it, and things like that. The hard part of this work is the actual speech recognition, trying to accurately identify what I'm saying by the computer and make sense of it and display it. 
Uh, we're doing many other experiments to help improve the actual accuracy of that phonetic recognition component, uh, but most of those things have no visual display to show, so I just concentrated on this one.